Hi hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching He Makes It Easy and welcome to the new video for Design Technology Timber's content and today we have 7.3 which is Timber specific content which is selection of Timbers and by the end of the lesson you should be able to describe 7.3.1 the aesthetic factors 7.3.2 environmental factors 7.3.3 which is availability factors 7.3.4 which is the cost factors 7.3.5 social factors and 7.3.6 which is cultural and ethical factors so check out the pain comment in the description for all the timestamps and we'll move on now to 7.3.1 which is aesthetic factors which include form and color and texture and the form of a product is the way the overall shape and structure looks and some products are designed to be purely functional and some are designed to look good to, to the consumer and a good product manages to do both and timbers flowing, sometimes twisting green patterns make it particularly attractive and for color and texture timber can vary from color to color from like light yellowish brown to dark brown even to almost black lighter timber like pine is sometimes stained to make it look darker wood and keeping the distinctive green pattern that gives natural wood its characteristics look and the texture of wood can be quite rough but it finishes to a smooth surface that feels quite warm to the touch and like let's say ash is like brown western red cedar is dark, dark brown or red and uh, like you can see the colors over here then we have 7.3.2 environmental factors which include sustainability genetic engineering seasoning and upcycling and if a timber from sustainable source is used it does less damage to the environment and this is better for the long-term health of the local ecosystems and the global climate and genetic engineering allows scientists to make the changes to the dna of a tree and if they can like work out how to change the right part of the dna in the right way they can create a tree that is different from natural trees and it's possible to make a tree resistant to particular disease and scientists are also trying to, de to, like, to like develop trees that grow faster than they do naturally but let's say some campaign or campaigners are against genetic engineering of plants because they are concerned that we do not know enough about the long-term effects of releasing gene uh, like GMO, genetic modified organisms, into the environment. And for seasoning, a freshly cut tree is 85% water and it must, be, it must be dried to like 80% or below and often 10 to 12% for indoor use. And drying timber is called seasoning. And seasoned timber has increased strength, resistance to decay and stability, meaning it is less likely to warp or bend. And as seasoning stacks, the plants are set for a few years and it's a slow process because it takes a long time. And this type of seasoning stack, the plant in the room and pumps uh, first steam, then warm dry air around them and it dries much quickly uh, in a few weeks. And upcycling is basically a timber product that can sometimes be uh, like given a new lease of life by upcycling. A piece of old furniture might be, might be repaired and then painted to make it look modern and stylish. All palettes can be turned into a product such as a garden table or like continuous use of timber is better than burning it because burning releases carbon dioxide which contributes to the climate change. Then we have 7.3.3 availability factors which includes the use of stock materials, use of specialist materials and hurricane storms and diseases. And materials are processed and sold in standard sizes called stock materials. A sawmill cuts timber into standard sizes and if a designer uses stock size, it saves time from cutting the wood again to make it smaller and saves a lot of wasted timber. And for the specialist material, there are some specialist timber products that can be used for specific purposes. For example, marine plywood is waterproof for outdoor use. Expensive hardwood veneers can be laminated on the outside of cheaper timber. And structural house timbers can be treated with flame retardant chemicals to slow the spread of the fire in the house in case if there's any like um, house uh, fire breaking out and for the hurricanes and like storms and diseases trees can be affected by naturally occurring events like these over here and like hurricane and severe storms can blow trees over and it can take a long time for the tree to grow again and diseases can kill trees and if a new disease arrives in the country it can spread and kill off a particular type of tree and in Britain a lot of elm trees were killed by a disease called uh, Dutch elm disease and more recently, ash trees have died from the disease, the disease called ash dieback and about 126 million in British woods are at risk from this disease. 
Then we have 7.3.4 cost factors, which includes quality, manufacturing process, and treatment. And I'll just skim through this. And like timber is a natural material, so it grows with like variations and defects. And sometimes you can bend and like warp depending on how, how it's cut or season. And constructional carcass in timber is used for structural applications like joints or roof trusses. And like these things over here. And it is graded for strength, like the quality of the timber. And for softwood, C16 is the most common grade, and C24 is also quite common and is a bit stronger. And joinery timber comprises the best, the better looking pieces of timber. And it is used for products where timber will be seen, like window frames and doors. And because it can, be, it has, uh, it needs to be seen or it, it can be seen, that means it, it needs a more quality timber so that it looks ni nice on the outside. And for the manufacturing processes necessary, it acquire, uh, it require effect, uh, like it affects the cost of the product because of like uh, manufacturing processes. It's like an added value. And the scale of production ch uh, chosen will depend on how many products are to be made. And the scale of production needed will also affect the choice of manufacturing processes. And the designers will use stock sizes and standard components bought in so that the company does not need to specialist equipment to prepare timber or make parts that can be bought ready made. And for treatment, timber will burn and rot quite easily and quickly, and it has to be treated with chemicals to reduce this. And they, like timber can be pressure treated with preservatives, like over here. And they can also be treated with fireproofing materials or chemicals, uh, like the, I mentioned just now about the fire, to make it like burn less well. To like reduce damage to the wooden structures and give it more time to extinguish the blaze. Then we have social factors. We have uh, different social groups, trends and fashions and popularity. And for the use of different social groups, groups of people of different age or interests will be like will like, like different things. So if a product designer create a product that is appealing to one particular social group, it may not be appealed to another social group. Like cheaper materials such as chipboard or MDF are more likely to be used in mass consumer market, like the, like the, these type of furniture. And uh, like, a, like a furniture maker or like local carpenters can make like um, a more like special request to a wealthier client, and it's more likely to make to be like made of more expensive hardwood such as oak wood. And examples of social groups could be same genders, same race, same age, and same interest. And social groups are made out of two or more people that usually believe in the same thing and share similar characteristics. And the same social group may not be may not like buy a type of furniture made from certain type of wood as they might not believe in buying man-made wood whereas other social groups don't mind and they wouldn't buy it because uh, sorry they would buy it because it is cheaper then we have trends and fashions and product itself not only has to be useful it has also it also has to be appealing to customers so that they will like, get attracted to it and buy it and let's say here's a, a few common trends Wood was used for children's toy, but now it's plastic, like mostly plastic. And people used to make products with solid wood and expect it to have a long lifespan. But now, chipboard or veneered chipboard is used instead, and only expect furniture to last for a few years. So that it can be constantly like, uh, changed, and we can see why in a few minutes. And use plastic, acrylic or glass instead of wood furnitures, as they are, they are much more affordable and inexpensive. Then we have popularity, and the definition for popularity is a state or condition of being liked and admired, and it's, it's, it's depending on how popular or how well known something is, and here's the factors that affect popularity, location, reputation, and design, and here's how you achieve popularity, advertisement like online or real life, from people to people, and having a good quality product. Example of popular products are like YouTube, Netflix, and McDonald's, and I'm sure all of us know what these three are. Then lastly, we have 7.3.6, which is cultural and ethical factors, with eight points of uh, eight, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six points over here. Number one is avoiding offense, and like this, you can see this uh, top over here. It's an example of a product that was deemed offensive by many who saw it advertised, and to some. It reminded them of the strapped pajamas, Holocaust victims in World War Two. So it's um, it has to, you have to like avoid offense so that 
uh, in case people get offend offended by the, your designs. And suitability for intended market, you have to ask the, uh, these questions. Why is it uh, why is suitability for the intended market important? And it's important because you have to understand the intended market for a product so that you can make the product suitable for them. And it's important that a, a product designer for a user for a user of particular age or with a particular need is suitable for people of that age or need. And you have to understand the needs of your users. And this should not have an impact on the well-being or the safety or comfort of the people. And product cannot offend their consumers, otherwise they won't buy it, which brings us back to avoiding offense. And for example, like vegetarian users, child users, religious users, all users, and if the user needs a table to fit in the constrained area, then the table needs to be small to appeal to them. Then we have consumer society, and there are consumers that need a certain criteria to meet their cultural or ethical factors, and these factors need to be considered to attract the consumer society. Cultural, factor, uh, cultural factors include the set of beliefs, moral values, traditions, laws, and like let's say halal or non-halal for Muslim people. And for the ethical factors, it, inc it includes knowledge, values, personal goods, and morals and personality. And the consumer society is basically a society where people buy goods which they often not need, for example, jewelry, and it will help the, the economy by people spending money. Then we have effect of mass production. Carpenters used to make products one at a time, and now products tend to be mass produced. And mass production and manufactured boards have made products a lot cheaper than they used to be. And mass production also means factories are more automated than before, and lots of people have used to have jobs in the factories making the same thing every day, and they are basically replaced by the machines because it can like, perform faster and more accurate. And here's some effects of mass production in some photos. And then lastly, we have built-in obsolescence. And a lot of products only have a short lifespan. And manufacturers deliberately make some products with parts that fail after a time and cannot be replaced. Which is what we, talk, we were talking about just now, which was a bit um, uh, sneaky, you know? And this process of making products with a short lifespan that are intended to be thrown away and replaced is called built-in obsolescence. And you can have a read for the description. And manufacturers design products only to have a certain lifespan to encourage you to replace products you already own. This is a built-in obsolescence where new products are produced for a throwaway culture. For example, a phone battery may only last 100 charges until you have to change it. A computer software might, might need updating. Bodywork on the car may rust even though the engine is okay. And the product may go out of fashion. And lastly, here are the four types of obsolescence. Technical or functional obsolescence, like new technology replaces old technology. Style obsolescence, which is marketers change the styling of products so as to make owners, like the old, owning the old model, feel out of date or out to date, like cars or clothing. Intentional physical obsolescence is a product is designed to last for a specific lifetime. And if a product will be technically or st uh, uh, stylistically obsolete in five years, many marketers will design the product so it will only last for that time. And doing this will reduce the cost of making new products and lower the price to the consumers. And lastly, here's postponement obsolescence. Technological improvements are not introduced even though they could be, like a large software manufacturer that specializes in operating systems.